Hey everyone and welcome back to the Hack Shack. Today we're going to be making Full Metal Out. Humankind could not gain anything without first giving something in return. To obtain, something of equal value must be lost. That is alchemy's first law of equivalent exchange. In those days, we really believed that to be the world's one and only truth. So when I decided to make the suit, I realised that I didn't want it to be a, an exact copy of the anime. I wanted it to be something that was more based around my body shape, so I had to redraw the suit from scratch. From a 2D drawing, I made the best effort I could to make into a template that would work in 3D, but there's going to be a lot of trial and error. This skull shape is actually um, a pattern I found online which is for a magneto helmet but it's basically all I need to get the, uh, the round bit right. Once I made everything out of card it was really helpful to test it and see if things fit and I decided at this point I actually wanted the helmet visor to open properly like a real suit of armour. So here's the first crazy part. I've made a flat illustration into a 3D object and now I need to take that 3D object and make it back into a flat pattern. And the reason for this is that with cardboard you can cut it and glue it together whereas actually with the metal you have to stretch it and shape it. So this technique of using foil and tape is a really good way to get back to, to a flat template. Oh you think that sounds annoying? What is it, Bruce? Full Metal Al. So now we need to take that and then flatten it back out again. But you'll notice I need to cut it because obviously you can't flatten a round object. And then this is the first of over 60 pieces that I had to cut out of aluminium. In order to work the metal, um, you have to anneal it first by heating it. And a good way to check if it's the right temperature is when Sharpie disappears. Without any dedicated tools and forms, the sandbag is a really good way to start shaping the metal. And as you start to stretch it in one direction, you need to um, shrink it back in the other. So I go from the sandbag to the dish to the dolly. Then it's just a case of repeating this process until you get the desired shape. Now with all the hammering, the, the piece sometimes gets work hardened, so you have to anneal it again with heat. Once you're happy with one side, it's then a case of mirroring it and repeating for the other half of the helmet. Now where we cut the paper, there's actually means that there's extra metal in between, so you end up having to cut a bit off because it's stretched out. So I don't have the capabilities to uh, weld aluminium in the shack, so for this process it's just going to be riveting to hold the two pieces together. Now around the neck and areas where it's exposed, you just want to fold the edges over so there's a nice soft round smooth edge. I like a glove! Uh, for your head. And 
Now it's just a case of making each piece by part to fit the original helmet shape. And it's pretty much the same process for all parts on the suit. It's just a case of stretching, shrinking, forming, curving and bending. Sometimes there's extra bits from the stretching of the material, so you need to trim it off in order to fit. Dandles gave me this awesome riveting gun, which is way better than the little handheld one. Having made the helmet out of cardboard first, I had a really good idea of uh, the shapes that were needed and how things would fit together. I love seeing the metal take shape just with a few blows of the hammer. I left the pieces rough um, until the shape was right and then I could start on the detailing. Shiny aluminium is a little bit too uh, Excalibur for me, so I um, wanted a matte finish so I was sanding all the pieces as I go. Just using these little wing nuts to hold the helmet together for now. Constantly having to check and make sure things fit and still move and work the way they should. What do you reckon, Bruce? You want to try it on for size? Full Metal Al. The brake on this roller is great for perfect 90 degree bends. Got to make sure we fit the beard in. Now I wanted to make the chin bit removable in case I wanted to eat or drink anything while wearing the suit. Now the spikes were a little bit tricky because they've got to fit on a compound curve so I needed to trim them off. I need to make some bespoke nuts to replace those wing nuts that are holding the helmet together. I didn't have a bit large enough to drill a recess for the nuts, so I decided just to sand them down round instead. The press fit is really tight, but let's just put some epoxy in just to be double sure. Now this also means you can loosen and tighten the moving parts of the helmet. And that's it pretty much finished, and now we can work on building all the other parts around the helmet. Next up is the front chest piece because this will then dictate the back, the arms, the shoulders and everything else. And it's just a case of adjusting as you go. Now you can see here that card is great as a template but you can't get a compound curve so everything is just kind of like two and a half deep. Luckily Bruce is roughly the same size as me so he's an okay stand in if I can use him to place the pieces on as I go. Just remind anyone else of that goal against Sunderland. Now the shoulders proved to be the trickiest part. There was lots of back and forth and trial and error to make sure that they fitted with the arms underneath. And like the helmet, there's a lot of compound curves here, so it was a very complicated part. Oh, and there's two of them, and they're mirrored. The bicep uh, and leg pieces were the easiest parts to make, uh, they were simply just like cylinders really. The forearms are a little bit more complicated. And again I only need to make half of the suit out of card because then I can just flip it for the other side when I make it out of metal. I built the shoes around these pair of scabby old Nikkei's um, just so it is comfortable to wear them. It's done. So now, it's, now I can start taking apart the card template and then tracing it onto metal. Now I have these card templates, what I can do is go back and trace them back into Illustrator so I have the digital versions. Because I've had to adjust the shape and size of all the pieces, um, there's no way I could calculate how much it was going to take. And I've only got two sheets of aluminium so I've got to be extra careful when laying out the pieces.
I like the helmet, it's a case of uh, cutting out all the pieces. And then once done, I just wanted to lay them out and make sure I had everything I needed. Now there's well over 60 parts, um, some of which are mirror opposites of the others, some of which are individual pieces. And all these have been deburred and flattened and have the edges sanded. Once I started to make the parts, it was evident that I needed bits to fill in the gaps. Um, and that's where the kind of leather and the undersuit came into play. I'd actually already made one of the gloves for the trailer two years ago, but I decided to start again and remake them both. The metal on these parts is a little bit thicker than the rest of the suit. Um, it doesn't need to be as bended and shaped as much, but also it looks chunkier on the hand. And add any detail like these real bolts really start to bring the pieces to life. Now the shoes up next, and like the helmet, the kind of moving parts as well. But because I've made them out of cardboard first, it was um, pretty easy to actually put them together. Although this toe piece looks simple, it's actually one of the most complicated pieces to make. There's lots of shrinking and bending and shaping. And I actually wanted them to be a left and a right so they're shaped properly to fit the shoe. And these are then riveted together so they move and flex as you walk. The upper thigh parts are a little bit complicated, but the hardest bit is mirroring two 3, 3D objects. It's really difficult to try and get your head around. And also as you bend and flex it one way, the opposite side of the metal wants to stretch out and go the other direction. Now the really important part of here was to get full range of motion with the legs, so make sure there's enough gap behind the knee, in front of the knee, at the thigh, things like that. I could have curved all these on the wooden form that I made, but the roller made it so much easier. Thanks James! Like the helmet, any sharp edges you want to curve over and bend away from the skin so it doesn't get trapped. I made this quick little form in order to get a nice clean ridge on some of the pieces. And then attaching the spikes to the forearm in the same way. Now the foam padding adds, uh, has a couple of different purposes. One is to make it a little bit comfortable, um, two it makes it stay on the arm, and three it also bulks it out to make it look a bit more muscular. Now this next part is kind of like a cummerbund. Um, I thought it was just purely ornamental but actually it serves a really uh, important purpose. It holds up the legs and it also straps onto the back. Son of a bitch. If you get this a nice snug fit, then everything else can attach to this and it can just be supported by my gut. Initially I thought the back part was just going to be flat, um, but it wanted to curve in at the base of the spine and then kick out. So there's lots of complicated uh, compound curves on this one. And this is where it was no use having Bruce because um, the shape of my upper body is completely different in that I'm not a 1980s shop mannequin. I initially considered stretching this all out of one piece, but I think there was just too much metal to try and move in order to get that front spike. So I ended up riveting it, enjoying it. But it actually looks kind of cool, and I think in the design and the anime you see some rivets here anyway. Making these spikes was super fun, uh, there was quite a lot of them on the suit. Um, you start them off on the roller, but you can only go so far, then you've got to do the rest by hand. I ended up making the shoulder plates a bit wider than the card model, um, just to make sure I had enough range of movement with the arms. These are probably the toughest bits to move, just given how much uh, material needed to be stretched and shaped. But 
what I found great about this process is you can just start out really ugly and dirty and get the generic shape and then work out smoothing it out later. Wanted to give the shoulder straps um, a little bit of thickness, so I just rolled the edges like I did with the uh, helmet. In the anime, Al is kind of a spirit and the parts are floating, um, but I need to hold them all together with bits of leather. And that made making a lot of uh, bespoke belt pieces as well and buckles. This is the first time I've really kind of made actual functional things out of leather. Um, I enjoy the process, but I've, I've got a lot to learn. These get riveted on, um, and then the leather itself is flexible so you can move. Al's got a couple of symbols on his suit. There's one on the shoulder plate and then there's one uh, on the inside of the back as well. There's one version where he's got like full tribal tattoos, um, but I think I'll leave that for another day. The blood seal inside Al's suit is what um, binds his soul to the actual metal itself. Now when it comes to attaching the spikes, um, there might be occasions where I can't wear them, so if I'm at a convention or something, so at the minute they're just going to be hot glued on because I might have to swap them out for foam. And after all that aggressive uh, metal working, I think it's just time to uh, relax with some sewing. I've got some skirt parts to make and also the headdress. This aluminium wire uh, comes in super handy in order to put inside of the fabric to make it stiffen up. Just twisting three uh, ribbons together and then attaching them to the helmet. And lastly, it's a bit of weathering. Um, it was really fun doing this to the project. It really makes it come to life, add some age, add some stories, and I ground in some scratches as well as if, as if I'll had some battle scars. And this all got hit with some matte varnish just for a bit of protection. And that's it done. Spear out!